Hey everyone, it's Johnny from Ignite here. Thanks for tuning into another video. Today we're going to be looking at how to factorize a non-monic quadratic trinomial. A couple of preliminary points here. This method of factorization will not work for every type of non-monic quadratic trinomial. For every, that is for every expression that looks like this. It won't work for every single type. It will only work where the factors, okay, where the factors of this particular expression are rational when that is that they can ex be expressed as a fraction. Okay, so if you have a whole number answers, for instance, if the factors are two and three, then this method that I will show you will work. But if you have a factor such as the square root of two, the square root of two is irrational because it cannot be expressed as a fraction, then the method will not work, in which case, if you were solving a quadratic like this, if there was an equal zero at the end here, you would go straight to the quadratic formula or you could use a method called completing the square, which I'll show you in another video. Okay, so assuming that, and you might just, if you get this in an exam, you just assume if it asked you to factorize something like this, that PSF will work because the factors are rational. That, that is that they are either fractions or whole numbers. Uh, we use this method. Now, just remember also that a non-monic Non-monic. Monic means one, so non-monic means a number other than one before the x squared term. We're not talking about any of these terms, we're talking about the x squared term. Okay, so non-monic means there is a number other than one, including negative one as well, because you would just factorize the negative out in that case to then leave positive one in the brackets. But non-monic, we're talking about 2, 3, 4, negative 2, negative 3, etc. Anything other than 1 in front of that x squared. That's when you would use the PSF method in the way I'm about to show you. A quadratic, of course, is where you have an x squared term in the expression and where squared or 2 is the highest power of all the terms. So if there was an x cubed here, it would not be a quadratic. A trinomial simply means it's a quadratic that has three terms. It's possible to have a quadratic that only has one term. That is that it was just 2x squared equals 0 or 2x squared. That's a quadratic, but it's not a trinomial because it only has one term. But when you have three terms, not one or two, it's a trinomial and that's when you use the PSF method that I'm going to show you. So given all of those conditions, you use this method. Okay, so we use the PSF method. If you've watched my video on monic quadratic trinomials, You'll be familiar with the PSF method, which means product, sum, and factors, but we're going to apply it in a slightly different way. So don't copy the steps exactly. I'll tell you that the first step is slightly different. So P means product, okay? P means product. That means we want two numbers that multiply to the following. So with monic quadratic trinomials, it would be plus three, we would write plus three there as, as our P. But actually, because it's a non-monic, you have to get this number at the front here, the two, and multiply it, this is the unique step, multiply it by three. So we have two times three equaling positive six. Always important to recognize the sign before it. So if it's negative, you have to include negative. So we have positive six. Now the S, the sum of our two numbers that we're going to find, I haven't found them yet, is going to still be the number including the sign before the x term. So plus 5x plus 5. Okay, so plus 5 is our sum. That is the same as with the monic quadratic trinomials when we do PSF. It's just that P step where you multiply the 2 by the 3 that is different. Okay, so what we now do is we actually find two numbers, the factors, we find two factors that multiply to plus six. Okay, that's forget about the S for a second, we just focus on the P. Always start with the P first. So what two numbers multiply to six? Well, there's a couple of combinations, so we'll write them all down and we'll narrow it down to one combination after we consider the S. So six, we have one and six. We have two and three and three and two, of course, and six and one, but we'll consider those the same. And then, of course, you have negative one and negative six. Don't forget to consider negatives in this situation and negative two and negative three because negative two times negative three equals positive six. A negative and a negative makes a 
positive. So we have four possible combinations here, but we're going to narrow it down to one by considering the S. So this is step two of the PSF method. And what we now do is we look at these combinations and we say, which combination, what two numbers here add or might or subtract in the case that there's a negative, but we just say the sum. So we'll just say add to plus five. So one plus six is seven. It is not that combination therefore, okay? Because it adds to seven. Two plus three equals positive five. We have our winner. And minus one plus minus six, of course, plus and minus just make a minus. So it's minus one minus six equals minus seven. That won't work. And minus two minus three equals minus five. That won't work. So just note, even though they're negatives, I am plusing them. It's just that plus and a minus make a minus. So I went straight to that. So two and three are our winners. Now, this is the second difference with monic quadratic trinomials when you do PSF. So the first difference was the P, you have to multiply the two by the three or whatever number is in front of the X squared, which is not one. You multiply it to give the P. And the second difference that is a result of that is that this these numbers here don't go straight into the brackets. We're not going to get straight to the answer here. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. We're going to rewrite this expression by splitting up the middle term. So that's the crucial step here. We split up the middle term. So it's going to look like this. 2x squared. And then instead of writing plus 5x, I write plus 5 in terms of 2 and 3. Now, what does that mean? It, when it's positive 2 and positive 3, I write plus 2x plus 3x plus 3. So, notice the key part of this step is that the middle term here, using the factors we got from that PSF method, was to split up the plus 5x term here. Notice it's exactly the same thing plus 5x and plus 2x plus 3x are the same. We do this splitting up of it so that we can then couple two terms. We're going to actually factorize two sets of terms, okay? So we factor in pairs here. And let me show you what I mean by this. We're going to draw a line now. Now that we've split up the middle, we've got four terms. So you notice how it was a trinomial, it was three. Now we've got four terms. And I'm kind of going to draw a line down the middle here. And... What we then do is we factor the two pairs separately. Okay, so 2x squared plus 2x. What's the highest common factor of those two terms? It is 2x. And then we put in brackets. 2x times what equals 2x squared? It's x. 2x times what equals plus 2x? 1, because it's the same thing. Put it in brackets. And notice this. That was the first half, right? Then the second half, we do plus 3x plus 3. We factorize those two now. So factorizing them, we take out the highest common factor, plus 3. So you have to include the positive here because it's going to be in between these other terms. Plus 3 comes out. Plus 3 times what equals plus 3x? Because that's how you factorize. Plus 3 times x would equal plus 3x. And then plus 3 times what equals plus 3? Plus 1. What you'll notice here, and this has to happen if you've done it correctly, is that I've factorized these two halves of the equation, which might seem odd, right? It might seem odd. Why not keep it as 5x? Why split it up? Well, you split it up because what will happen is you'll notice that these brackets are identical. And that will happen if you've done this correctly. So you get x plus 1 and x plus 1, and you get these different terms on the outside. And what that means is that you can actually treat the bracket x plus 1 and this bracket x plus 1 like its own term. So consider this. You could actually have 2xy. Let me write it here so it's clear. 2xy plus 3y. So I'm making the bracket x plus 1 equal y here. Okay, this is important. I'm just showing you an example. So if I had 2xy plus 3y, how would I factorize that? Well, I would take out the y. So the y, which again is our bracket here, will come out and then it would be y times what equals 2xy? Well, it would be 2x. And y times what equals plus 3y? Plus 3. 
Okay, so notice how I have factorized out the y, which represents the bracket, the whole bracket it represents, x plus 1. You factorize it out, you actually end up with y on the outside. But remember, in our case, the y is actually x plus 1. Because it's, they're identical, those brackets are identical, so you can factorize them out. And what you get there is you get two brackets now. Now, hopefully you can see that. The common factor to both of these terms, you can imagine there's like two terms here. That was half and that half. Remember, we split it up into two halves. The first half had the y. And again, y is just a symbol I've introduced to represent x plus 1 as one term, one value. And then you also have it on the other side, right? So we pull that out to the front. See how we pulled it out to the front? y to the front, which is the same as pulling the brackets out to the front. And then you put the other terms in the other bracket because that's how you do it, isn't it? When you expand this, you do x plus 1 times 2x. That's going to take you back to 2x bracket x plus 1. Holding this whole bracket still as one value. That's the important part. And then if you did bracket x plus 1 times 3, you would end up with 3x plus 1. And that's what we had up here. So that gets us back to the previous line. So our final answer is bracket x plus 1, bracket 2x plus 3. To give you a simpler summary of this, once you split up the terms here and factorize the two halves, you put the bracket that is the same as one bracket, which you can see here is x plus 1, and you put the other two terms, 2x and plus 3, you combine those in a separate bracket, and that is the exact same value. Okay, so that is how you factorize a non-monic quadratic trinomial. The best way to understand this is to practice this a few times, so get a few different quadratic expressions like the following and practice, but you should end up with something like this each time if you've done it correctly. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.